my dudes time for another video this time we're gonna do something different normally we do in a drive-in we do an educational oh we checking out a feature another car just clown around at that spot you know we always clown around at <laughs> today we do something different a lot of you guys have asked for an overview or rundown of my g and stuff like that but there are some life changes that are happening and they're going to be some swapping around and because of this i decided i really need to do a garage overview yeah you heard me a garage overdue not overdue overdue well i guess it is overdue my overview is overdue yeah okay you get what i'm saying we are going to kind of like just go over the cars i have right now and go over a future plan i'm looking at i've decided to let some things go i love my collection but it's time to mix it up. Before I do get rid of one or two cars, let's go over and have an overview of what I have now. And there's a bee run around me. So let's get started. Think of that little montage hopefully it's a good one i haven't done it yet <laughs> youtube magic guys you gotta love it it's so different here is some examples of fine automobilia also it is a good example of the american dream and working your ass Ooh. off 100 percent i am new to youtube youtube did not help me provide these things I've worked my butt off many a days, many a nights, many a overtime, and over the years with a loving, beautiful wife, the support of a loving, beautiful wife, I was able to acquire these vehicles. I was able to enjoy them throughout the years. So always work hard, guys. Have your goals. Have an awesome woman to support you, not one that's had to bring you down, one to uplift you. And you could have the dream vehicles of your life. Nothing is out of your grasp and out of your control. You control your fate. Now that we're finished with the whole self-promotion, public speech, I'm trying to find a word. I don't know what it is. You know those that kind of uplift you? Not really preaching, but I don't know. I just can't think of it. Anyhow, let's start with age. I was going to say age over beauty, but this age really beautifully. Not totally aged, but you know what I mean. This is the oldest in the garage. This here is a 1970 Datsun 240Z. You guys know it, probably don't know too much about it, but it is a Series 1, which means in the model year of 1970, which is early fall of 69 to 70, fall of 70, that one year, this car was produced, made, and sold to the US market. Within that year, there was a lot of changes to be made in the fall of 70, model 71 year. So this car has a ton of one year only parts. So it's a very sought after model year. The major keynotes to tell a series one they don't always have hubcaps, but if they do have hubcaps, it's the center, it's the cup caps with the center D. The thing to note is these red hatch vents, vertical defrost lines. The 71 plus always had horizontal lines. This badge in of 240 here, the series two had the circle with the Z in it. The back is really the giveaway to tell tale to say what is a series one and what is a series two. The front, the front, 
didn't really have any major changes. It's really the back. The interior, let me make sure I not hit the car. One thing you can tell the interior, which is not always the case because sometimes it gets changed out. But these seats are series one seats with the adjuster. You saw me when I did the video updating them. So these seats are series one seats. In the steering wheel, you would see the steering wheel has, you would see the steering wheel has these little holes. Not sorry, not these little holes. They have these little dimples. In the series one, the steering wheel was dimpled, but the series two, these dimples were punched out. So they have holes. Another thing to tell the dash is the center. There's a lot of small things, but one, like I said in the last video, the flash symbol. Um, this is a series two console. I need to get the series one console. This vent, this vent, the series two, I need to get series one. Let's go to open, open the hood. The Series 1 airbox is like this. So this is a quick overview. You'd see in some of my other videos how over time I slowly bought parts, updated parts, and just tried to make it as clean as possible, as OE as possible. They may not be OEM parts, but they're definitely OE parts. Let's get a view from the other side. The next car age-wise is my 1996 Nissan 240SX SE, also manual, with the factory five-speed. Super clean car, super beautiful. Just check out this interior. Look how clean that is, guys. The white gauges from back in the day, remember? These were back in the day, these white gauges. Everybody's running them down. A little five speed there. Look how clean this sucker is. Back seat. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful car. Sunroof works, everything works. Let's see if I could squeeze over on the other side. Open the hood. Good door card. How beautiful that door panel is. 130 original miles. Let's stretch down in here. Ugh. Once again, another clean OEM car. Look at this engine bay. Look at the top heat shield in. Guys, this is a 25 year old car. This is all original. The Z has been restored. This is original. Look how good all that looks. And next by year, we have it, the one, the only, the grocery getter. The one you guys love, the one you guys know. My red 2001 G37S with a factory six speed freaking manual. You guys have been following me, know this car very well. You guys love this car as much as I do. We've been through this, this, with this vehicle, us, both of us, some of us, all of us.
over a number of years, building it up and working it up. It's kind of funny. My daily is my most modified car. I'm supposed to, well, not I'm supposed to. Normally, you would actually have a weekend car that's more modified than your daily. So if anything happens, yeah, it's down, you know, you can fix it and stuff like that. But actually, it's so weird that my daily is my most modified car. My two weekend cars, a stock AF. Why do I have two weekend cars stock AF? I don't know. It just worked out that way. I love this 240, how it's so clean, it's originality. And I love my Z for the same reasons. It's just beautiful and original. It does boil down to having two weekend cars that original. I need to have something modified. Anyhow, move on to the next one which actually is in a cage, it's a two-wheeled vehicle. And here it is. This is my 2016 CVO breakout from Harley-Davidson. This thing is so much fun. I've had it for about four years. I don't use it as much as I should but it is just totally, totally awesome. Some few key things on this that makes this totally more badass than any other, well, not any other, but most other breakouts on the road. This is a popular mod though. These pipes, which are loud AF, these pipes are some Van Hines high radius pipes. But the biggest thing, the biggest modification to this bike was the actual engine. The engine was originally a 110 cc, sorry, a 110 cubic inch engine. The modification went with the Screaming Eagle 117 CI kit, which entails new heads, cams, I don't think that the, the, the top covers, a um, bunch of springs, the entire is a stroker kit that's pulled on the bike, retuned to bring it up to a 117 CI. Yeah, let me get on this thing. 117 CIs. That's almost a two liter engine, a two, 2.0 CC engine. So this bike almost has an SR20 in it. The size of SR20 equivalent engine. It has so much torque, it's loud as hell. We'll pull some car outs and we'll check it out but it's so comfortable. It's a big fat boy. It's one of Harley's muscle bikes. The CVO part of the bike is Harley's custom vehicle operations, Harley's own customizable arm within themselves. So this is a customized version from the factory. Can't really see it there, but that is a 260 rear tire, which totally helps keep this bike planted but it makes it turn like a truck. <laughs> I wouldn't lie. It is a pain in the butt to turn. Have a nice little swing on bike there, another old one down there. But this is a fun thing. What's cool about these newer bikes, these newer Harleys, it's, you, use, you have a fob. You don't use a key or anything like that. And these bikes, let me see if I can get it tripped off a little bit. One handed, I don't wanna drop this motherfucker. This bike uh, has a factory alarm. I have the key in my pocket, so it's not gonna trip, dang. But normally, if anybody that didn't have the fob on them, if they tried to, to sit or raise or shift the bike, the, um, the bike would actually chirp. And if they don't, put it back on the side, it'll keep chirping until the alarm goes off. And then last but not least, something that's custom that doesn't really have a model year is my drift trike. This little thing. This little thing, also a manual, suicide shift I put on. Has a clutch on that side, brake on that side. It When I first got it, it didn't have any brakes. So I got a um, air fork put on and some disc brakes that are hydraulic because the cable ones is just so hard. 
It has 125 cc um, Lifan, Lifan engine. It's a, uh, I think an Indian engine. Not Indian, like the US um, chopper, but Indian as in like from India, I believe. So it has a 125 cc, four speed engine, no down, just four up, which is weird, I know. You know, you normally go first down and then the rest up, up, up. And then that's a crank, so there's a manual kick start with a, I think it's a 52 millimeter motorcycle exhaust. Solid axle, of course, because it's drift. And it's fun as hell. So, we've driven the 240 before. We've driven this before. We've driven 240Z. It's, it's funny because when I start talking about 240s, now I have to specify 240Z versus 240SX. So before, when I used to talk to my friends about my, my, my 240, they know I'm talking about my Z, because I've had this Z since 2008. I've only had the two SX for almost two years, a little over a year. Now I have to specify if I'm talking about the SX or the Z. We've been in the SX, we've been in the Z, we've been in the G a lot of times. Let's go ahead and pull the G out. Let's get, let's get this drug out of the middle, the drift track drug out of the middle. Then I think we can leave the lawn mower. The lawn mower is also a five speed, so manuals rule, okay? Everything in my garage is manual. Get them started, let them warm up, probably drive up and down the road, let you check it out. You guys haven't seen those things. But before I pull them out and we show the bike and we show the Harley, I have to say, two of these are going away. Which two, I can't say yet. But I am in the process of getting rid of two of these vehicles or a vehicle and a bike. I just don't know. But I have a dream, I have a vision of what I need to do. And we'll discuss that later in the video. start up the drift track first, that could be more of a pain in the butt, and it takes a little while longer to get warmed up.
that was a drift trike. I know I mentioned it before a lot of times, but I never really actually showed you guys. Well, I showed you guys. I never actually showed you guys it running and rolling and drifting. I'm a little rusty. I haven't really been used it that much. I really do need to get it out more and learn how to do a little um, 180s and stuff like that. 360s and stuff. It's pretty cool. Now let's go ahead. Let's start up the Harley. I'll cradle this big boy. Ignition. All right, put it in neutral. This neutral is really tricky. It's very small. Not too far. I should know I got it. <laughs> and then ready for the noise. American iron. Did you hear that thing? I'm screaming at the top of my lungs right now. Oh man, that, I keep forgetting how badass Ooh. that bike is. <sighs> Shit. Ooh. It's so good, it's so raw. The feeling you just sit on that big old hog, it. <laughs> Ooh, hopefully the audio was good for you guys. I mean, it's so dang good. Disturbing the peace up in this bitch. Every time I take this out, the neighbors love me. These straight pipes, the big stroker engine, mm, 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 they love me. Which kind of brings the somber sad part of this video where I've mentioned earlier that unfortunately two vehicles got to go. Two vehicles got to go because I always wanted a 510, a Datsun 510. I've mentioned it many times on the channel. I've brought it up before. 
And I've always seen 510s come up and go on the block, on bat, or sometimes just plain old private sales. And I keep missing the chance to own one because my assets are tied up in all these vehicles. Oh, don't get me wrong, I do love all these vehicles and I thoroughly enjoy them. That Harley, when I used to work at an office building, I used to always take my Harley out on a Friday or something like that, nice, when it's nice out. Enjoy the commute and everything, it's so much fun. But I've always wanted a 510. Tr truth be told, I've always wanted a 510 over a Z. The thing is in Tennessee, there are no 510s, nowhere. I've only seen one 510 in the 20 years I've ever lived here. Go over to the West Coast, they're everywhere. 510s crazy. Florida, here and there, they're a little sprinkled. Just nothing, just dry. I just haven't found any here. I really wanted a 510. I really do always love the 510. A while ago, when I got the 240, I taunted the fact at fixing it up and selling it and selling the bike. And honestly, I think that time has come. Who knows, I might even get rid of the drift trike. I'll get the carburetor working good and just sell the drift trike also, you know? I don't know. But I know that I want a 510 and I need a 510 in my life. <laughs> I really do. Um, so that's where I'm at. I've come to terms. That last ride on the Harley just now, those two laps really hurt my heart. But I believe I'm, it's time to sell the bike and it's time to sell the 240 and try to finally get my 510. I love. I love the 240, I love the bike, but there's absolutely zero reason to have two factory OEM weekend cars. A weekend car needs to be something nice and fun and enjoyable. Yes, the 240 is nice and fun and enjoyable, but it's not boosted enjoyable. It's not loud enjoyable. It's like Sunday cruise enjoyable, which Sunday cruise isn't bad. And I could always take this off for a Sunday cruise, but sometimes you just don't want to ride a bike. Sometimes you want to have a car. And unfortunately, the 240 and the bike's got to go. It pains me, it truly does. But to find my dream car, it's silly, a square, boxy, ugly old 510. Got to get rid of them. And my wife is behind me, as usual. Awesome woman, I love that lady so much. But. She hasn't batted an eye or anything like that. She knows I work hard. I deserve some toys. She supports me with the decision. In the next 10 years, this 240 is gonna be ridiculous, this SX. The price, the condition, like it's an OEM 240, 25 years later. You don't see them at all like this. They're all drifted out, broken up, quarters all messed up. This bike. Holy moly, this bike is so nice. Well, the wifey doesn't want to get on the bike. There was only one time I was able to get her on the bike. I even have sissy bars with a padded backrest and she still didn't want to get on the bike. So the bike is something I alone could enjoy, but in the 240, I could take her along with us and she could enjoy the ride with me too. So the plan is, unfortunately, sell the 240 and sell the bike. I have crazy high ceilings, so I'm gonna get a high lift door put in, so the garage door, instead of comes up this way, it'll go all the way up before it turns, and right, see right where the cross beam is? That's seven feet. That's how high some two lifts, four post lifts are. So I'm gonna get a four post lift in here, and we're going to be able to store two cars in this garage. But for these two vehicles, my goal is to get a high lift door for a post garage and hopefully one day a 510 on top or below the Z. Am I making a mistake? What do you think? Put in the comments, what do you think? Which combo should I sell? What should I keep? Should I keep everything? 
I really do want a 510. But I do also like to hear what you guys' thoughts are. So please, if you can, go ahead, post in the comments what you think. Don't forget while you're in the comments, hit that like, hit that sub, guys. Let's grow this channel. Let's actually try to make some money off of YouTube so I can really blow up this, this channel, blow up this garage, and do some cool stuff. I already had one giveaway. Hopefully, the channel grows, I could have more giveaways for you guys and share the love, you know? I always talk to everybody. I'm not a fuck boy. I don't do crazy stuff like that, so I don't get fuck boy views. But a lot of you said that my channel helps you all, entertainment-wise and DIY-wise, learning-wise. So let's keep this train rolling. Let's say goodbye to the 240 and goodbye to my hog. Golly. I'm gonna miss this the most. The 240 I'm gonna miss, right? Because I really wanted to troll people on a factory ass 240 when they get scarce. I'm gonna miss my hog and I'm gonna miss my 240.